So the first reason why I joined the Air Force was because I wanted to be a role model for my friends and my family, uh, mainly my little sister, love her to death. Second reason was because my family is very military. Uh, my mother, my father, my stepfather, my stepbrother, myself, my oldest half-brother, we're all military, Marines, Army, Air Force, all of which. That was the second reason, it's like in our blood. I'm third generation, so proud of that. And thirdly, I'm very patriotic. I love our nation, I love what we do. And I wanted to not only, you know, do my part for the United States, but also help out our allies and the world as a whole. So I've been in the Air Force now for five years and my current pay grade is E5, Staff Sergeant. So that's what I currently am at this time. So my job, I'm a logistics planner by trade, which is going to be AFSC code 2G0X1, so. So initially I was going to be ammo, but after when I graduated basic training and I started shipping out, there was, I guess, some paperwork issues where my job no longer existed. So I had to pick a new job. The new job I ended up with was logistics plans. When I was initially creating my list of jobs that I wanted to do, I didn't really think too much of them. When I heard of ammo, I thought, oh, that'd be kind of cool. When I th heard of logistics plans, I was like, oh, that might be cool. You know, that's something I like to do is planning. So I know logistics plans was on my first list when I was going through. However, I didn't really, I didn't really was like, I want to aim for this job or aim for that job. I was all right with joining, you know, whatever job was available that was on the list of uh, jobs that I wanted. If I had to choose what type of jobs that I wanted to do now that I have a better understanding of what those other jobs are and how they fit into the Air Force is probably would be a communications type job or perhaps a civil engineering type job. I definitely seem like I would be a good fit for those if I weren't in logistics plans. So when I signed up for the Air Force, I wanted to do the six-year contract. It just made sense to me. You know, I'm very, like, I, I knew how the military was when I was, when I grew up in it. So I wanted to do the six-year contract. I wanted to be in for the long term. So that's why I signed up for that amount of time. So for logistics plans, the location of the tech school is going to be at Lackland. So once you're done with basic training, you'll then be heading down the street over to the 344 training squadron. If I'm not mistaken, I believe it's still there. Uh, so you'll be there for a little bit. So you're not leaving Lackland just yet. But good news though, Lackland, uh, so for the, for the training, it only takes about one month. So you'll be there from start to finish about 30 days. And after that, all the days uh, before and after will be in processing and out processing. So then you can go to your first base after you've graduated. So yes, you're stuck at Lackland for like an additional month or so, but hey, you get to leave fairly quickly as well. So you're not stuck there too long. So for me, at least, when I was in tech school, it wasn't too bad. I had a lot of good memories from there. But there were a couple of things that, you know, you have to be concerned about. Like, uh, you know, making sure that you get enough sleep so you can wake up in the early morning. I want to say we woke up at like 4 or something in the morning to do PT. I'm not sure what the regimen is now. But that was one factor. And also, they want to ensure everything's like quality of life and also everybody's, you know, behaving properly. So then they're going to do random general inspections of the dorms. So they'll check your stuff, make sure everything things good to go. So overall, not too shabby. I can't really complain too much, but just make sure you stay out of trouble. So the beauty of logistics plans is our job is pretty much universal. We can go anywhere around the world because our job is usually needed. Uh, examples of this, we can be stationed in the States, whether it be Vandenberg, California or McDill, Florida, all the way across the world to places like Lagenheath, England, Spangdalem, Germany, Okina uh, Kadena, Okinawa, Yakota, Japan, Osan, Korea. We pretty much can go anywhere. So when it comes to the job details, and whenever anybody asks me what we do as a logistics planner or loggy, uh, that's our nickname, usually I say this to them. I say that our job mainly deals with deployments and redeployments, and we deploy and redeploy 
personnel and equipment from A to B and back from B to A. We also deal with a lot of things as well, such as plans and programs. So these can entail war reserve material, support agreements, the base support plan, as well as receptions. There are additional duties that we deal with as well, but those are the top ones that I can think of at this point in time. Overall, our job is very high vis and there is a lot going on. Things that we do to our day-to-day -day job, we'll walk in, we'll pull certain reports to check on movements, to check on data, make sure readiness is good to go, taskings are good to go. We also deal with ensuring that contracts with different agencies are good to go, ensuring that equipment stock levels are good. There's a lot of different things that we deal with when it comes to readiness and tasking. So that's kind of like the bulk of our day-to-day -day is ensuring that all of our programs are up to date, making sure that everybody is reflecting the most current information so that way we are ready and we are postured. So it is quite an intense job, but it's also a very rewarding job. So when it comes to advice that I could give, I would say there are three main things, just to keep it simple and to the point. In terms of the job, I've been told this many a times, have a log ebook, have a logistics plans manual book that you will create. And what this is, entails is, once you learn a new process, make sure you take down the continuity, the notes for that process, and you put it in your binder. And you will collect and establish this binder that will consist of all of these different processes, all these different little tips and tricks, all of the uh, meanings for certain codes and stuff, and this book will serve as a source document, your Bible, if you will, for your job. So that way you can hit the ground running and you know support just as well as the next person. So, and it's good because you get to see how different bases do it. So after when you are done with your first assignment, you go to your next assignment, you can utilize the old continuity you have with and kind of bump it against the newer, uh, against the other continuity that you now are experiencing at your new base. So you can see differences, similarities, and learn from both. One, t one tip though, when you do create this book, your, your binder, ensure that you continuously update it. Maybe you might put some AFI references in there, uh, Air Force instructions, or you might even put some other information in there that might get updated or rewritten. Ensure that it's up to date so that way you're not, you know, you're not using old data. Second thing I would uh, I would suggest is picking people's brains. If you don't know what it is that's being talked about because one thing as a logistics planner is if anything we have our own like language. Obviously military lingo we start using acronyms, right? The logistics plans career field has a lot and I mean a lot of acronyms that we have to know. And it's, you know, other jobs have the same as well. But when we talk, it's like a different language. So ensure that you are asking those questions. Ensure you know what it is that people are talking about. Because the last thing you want is to not know what's going on. And then when someone entrusts you with that task, you don't want to fall short. So, and no worries, it will happen. And that's what's going and that's what's going to make you better is that you're going to ask those questions you're going to try your best eventually there might be that one moment where you might you know fall a little bit short but it's okay you're going to learn from that third thing is to have a mentor so not necessarily for the career field but for in general is to have a mentor that's outside of your organization outside of your office that can be uh you know that lifeline that you can ask certain questions to without any uh like bias uh or you know can give you that unfiltered perspective and uh you know much needed guidance if you you know are trying to pursue a higher career in the military or anything in general just have that mentor. Mentors are very important. And usually you want the mentor to be at least, you know, like like somebody who's been in for a while, somebody who knows their stuff and, you know, somebody that's really caring for their people. So, you know, anybody like that is pretty good. If you have any further questions and cons or concerns about the logistics plans career field if you'd like to get a hold of me you can email me at veryfunbun at gmail.com you can email me there just kind of title logistics plans question and i can uh i can be sure to answer as many as i can just keep in mind the time difference since i'm over in japan right now sometimes you know it'll be nighttime when you message me so i'll try my best
But yeah, if you want to get get a hold of me, you can do that.